Um, now Jessica Lynch, and I'm actually, I cannot wait when you sent the email saying that you were involved with <laughs> in Jessica Lynch. And here's the reason why I remember, you know, I'm 31 years old. I'll be 32 here soon enough. So I wasn't that old when the Iraq war kicked off, but I was old enough to, you know, I watched the news with my parents at night. Like I was right. very aware of what was going on. And I just remember the Jessica Lynch thing was on the news all the time and it was this young blonde female soldier she's been taking pow and you know you you hear all these horror stories and then the rescues on the news and it was this i mean it was a nightly event and then as i'm sure you know you know then the initial reports that i remember were that there was this massive gunfight and they faced intense resistance and they pulled off this insane hostage rescue mission the bush administration essentially promotes that narrative. And then you start seeing people come out and say, that's not at all what happened. Andy Stumpf, who was on SEAL Team 6 there, said that that was not his recollection of how things went down. So yeah. once and for all, what was the Jessica Lynch <laughs> rescue mission actually like? So, you know, <laughs> leading up to it, and I talked about this before, we were told and the intelligence we were given was that there was Marines in the area. And I don't remember the side, you know, I don't, I, our size. I don't remember if they set up a battalion, a division brigade. I, I really honestly don't remember, but that was trying to basically seize that city and couldn't, they read, they met such heavy resistance that they got pushed back and they basically pushed out, and the, be and the best that they could do was basically try to lock it down so that no one could get out of there. So they were outside of it, like basically trying to lock down the city so that no one could get out of the city, right? Um, so that was the intelligence we were given. And I, I mean, straight up, like, and I told you this, like we were packing ammo. I mean, I remember looking at this, another squad, this is a guy named Matt Nyman. I looked over at his 203 gunner and I was like, dude that guy's not even gonna be able to function like he literally had something like you know 50 to 60 rounds of 203 on him i'm like dude you got it like i got it like you want to be prepared but that dude's not even gonna be he can't even lift up his rifle like he's got so much shit on him but we were told like hey you're going into the firefight of the century the Marine, you know, element literally got pushed out of the city because the fire, you know, the, there was so much armed resistance in this city. So we're like, oh, shit. OK, you know, and so, you know, I told you, I mean, I remember sitting with my team and we've laughed about this so many times since. And I'm like, listen, you know, <laughs> sorry, this is funny. I'm like, I love you guys. Like, you are my brothers. Like, I will never forget you. If anything happens to me or happens to you, like, we'll carry on your name. Like, you know, I mean, you know, and like, you know, my 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 uh, 203 gunner, he's, you know, a tough dude, but very sentimental kind of guy, you know, because he was older. You know, we're dumb. We're young. You know, he was older. And he, you know, I remember like crying, like, I fucking love you guys, you know, and all this shit. But anyway, so we land. On C-46s, which are the Marine helicopters that are made, they're smaller and 47s are made to land on aircraft carriers um, and boats and stuff like that. If I get the terminology wrong, I'm not in the Navy, so piss off. Um, but uh, anyway, and we land, and immediately it's a shit show. We land in like this giant landfill, and it we're like crawling out like through trap, like the the helicopter like sank. Then like went through emergency procedures to hover so that they didn't sink into this trash. And they're like, get out. Like, and we jump and, you know, you're like expecting to hit the ground and you land in trash and you're like sinking and you're like trying to swim out of this. And we have all this ammo because we all took a lot of extra shit. Finally, we make it out of it and uh, it just got worse from there. Um, and the reason is, is because electricity trash services all this stuff had been shut off for so long and now also because the marines had pretty much laid siege to this city um sewer trash everything overflowing on the streets so yes we were in the shit but it wasn't the shit and as in a firefight it was literal shit you know 
And there's story after story of people falling in open sewers oh. and tripping and falling and all this stuff. And what's even funnier is, is we were the ROE we were given. The ROE we were giving going into that target was if they have boots on, you can shoot them. So we would go into rooms because we're clearing this stuff because we're basically like converging on this city trying to lock down the hospital um, while um, was it 375 or was it 175? 175 was coming in to lock in the, the hospital itself. And, and so we're going, you know, building to building clearing and guys would come into rooms and they would, you know, when they would see they didn't have a weapon, they would shine at their feet looking for boots you know but anyway um i think there was like literally like you know for 275's part there was one guy that was shot and it was because like he was basically like silhouetted like up you know on a second story and came out and you know it legitimately looked like he was holding something i don't remember if it was a gun i it might very well have been a gun but there was literally no firefight the worst thing that really kind of happened um was well, one, 175, they locked down the hospital. They unlocked the hospital. They linked up with the doctor or janitor or whoever it was. We're showing where Jessica Lynch is. And then when SEAL Team 6 landed on the roof, you know, 175 was like, hey, just go go over there. She's right there on the, you know, on the third door to the right, you know. And I, I don't know if Rangers, like, even actually saw her before. But, you know, they were probably told, like, hey, the Navy SEALs need to rescue her or whatever it was. I, I don't totally remember. Um, but... The worst thing that really kind of happened on that mission was is one seven five having to dig up the grave site, and the guys that talk about that is it, it's it's a very traumatic thing. Um, so the entire crew and everything that was with Jessica Lynch and I I don't want to you know sit here and try to you know steal their thunder. That's their story to tell. I just want to kind of highlight you know guys like Huma Barnett that have talked you know told me about it. Um. But having to dig up that gravesite was was pretty bad because they needed to recover the remains. But these people had been, you know, buried for a long period of time, you know, so they were decomposing and everything else. Um, and it was pretty traumatic. It was it was pretty bad. Uh, it was the right thing to do is what needed to happen. But, uh, you know, a lot of those guys had to do that. It was a it was a definitely a terrible thing. Oh, I can't, I can't even imagine. I, I didn't realize that it happened. I didn't know that they, they got the bodies of the other people yeah. on this subject. I mean, I don't know if you know, Jessica Lynch ended up testifying in front of Congress about what had actually happened during the shootout that she was mm -hmm. taking POW in and then the hospital. Why do you think the story of Jessica Lynch by her own admission was twisted and change so dramatically to include things that she openly admits never happened. Listen, 12 guys can step into a firefight and there'll be 36 different stories. They'll face a five armed combatant, but somehow 29 people died. Um, you know, it's just, well, I mean, you know, on her part. Okay. And, you know, I know people, you know, say a lot of different things about her. Listen, like, she was, you know, the rank she was, she was, she was told the things that she was told, like things, you know, did obviously did not go the way that she probably envisioned them going or hoped that they would go. And she didn't want to be captured, you know, and imagine how intense that was for any one of us to be taken captured. Okay. Like imagine being taken captured by the enemy. Okay. But now be imagine being captured as a woman, right. In an Islamic country, Okay, where women's lives are less valuable. They just are. Women are property. Women are very different than men are viewed. You know, oh, an American woman, by the way. Like, so, you know, it's hard. There probably was a gunfight in her eyes because they were probably throwing flashbangs. I don't remember, you know, but they were probably throwing flashbangs. And I'm sorry, under trained observer. A, a nine banger flashbang sounds like a gunshot, you know, it sounds like rapid fire, you know, it, it, who knows, you know, and, um, you know, the, the entire narrative being the way it was, man, it, there was so many things happening during these times, you know, because I mean, like, this is a big day for her. She was rescued, but this was like, like a 26 hour event for most of us in a five month 
you know, deployment for, you know, at least my platoon, it was, it was five months. I mean, you know, it was, it was a big deal because we were rescuing an American, but there a lot of shit that happened, you know? And um, so, you know, the narrative itself, I don't want to sit here and say, you know, that people love to just exaggerate, but things get exaggerated in your mind, you know, and I'm, I might, we'll, we'll tell another story, you know, that um, it, that one's probably not as exaggerated because it doesn't need to be. But what's funny is, is I've heard people tell that story that weren't even there. And, you know, there's always, you know, little additions that are added in. Wait, over wait, time. What, sto what story are you talking about now? Uh, I was, you know, you wanted to talk about the Iraqi brigade. Uh, yeah, well, let's pivot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is a perfect segue. Let's get into the Iraqi tank brigade. 